Okay, President Chen, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight is today is uh, Tuesday, June 29th. It is now 7 p.m. We are going to start with our special public hearing uh, on um, the composition of potential trustee voting areas. Uh, before we do that, uh, just to make some brief uh, introduction and announcements. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ken Chin, and I am the president of the San Mateo Foster City School Board. Uh, with me here on screen, we have the vice president of the school board, Allison Proctor, and then also our deputy county counsel, Rosenda uh, Paltiglia. Uh, we also have uh, managing our webinar, uh, Peter Gonzanis, or not web webinar, but Zoom. And we also have another uh, representative from county council, Tim Fox, who may be available for questions. Uh, so before we jump right into this uh, public hearing, uh, we're going to have a Spanish language uh, translation announcement. And Tony, if you wouldn't mind making the announcement for those attending. Okay, para las personas que necesitan una traducción de esta reunión en español, pueden apretar el mundo que está en la parte de abajo de su pantalla, y yo con gusto les voy a estar traduciendo simultáneamente esta reunión. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tony, for that announcement. And we are going to jump right in. Uh, Rosendo, you are on deck here and up, and we'll be here to listen to your presentation. Thank you, President Chen. Okay, good evening, uh, members of the San Mateo Foster City School District uh, uh, constituents and uh, interested parties. Uh, my name is Rosendo Padilla. I'm a deputy county counsel with the San Mateo County Council's office. And my office does provide legal advice and uh, counseling and services to the San Mateo Foster City School District. On June 10th of this year, the board adopted a resolution of intent to transition uh, from its current at-large election system to a bi-trustee area election system. This change was prompted by a letter received uh, from an attorney named Mr. Scott Rafferty advising the district that the district may be in violation of the California Voting Rights Act if it continued with its current and uh, with its current at-large election system. When the board adopted its resolution on June 10th, 2021, the timeline was set to complete this process. Pursuant to election code section 110, the district has 90 days from the time that the resolution of intent is formally adopted by the board to complete its overall transition. The final step is to have an ordinance adopted by the county committee on school district organization that would approve the district's ultimate proposed plan and proposed maps as it relates to the trustee areas. Election code 110 provides that prior to the map drawing process, a district, the district must hold two public hearings in order to allow the community to provide input regarding how or what it would like to see when the district does begin the map drawing process. The California Voting Rights Act is modeled after the Federal Voting Rights Act. The Federal Voting Rights Act was intended to ensure that local jurisdictions do not utilize voting systems that would deprive minority voters of their political power. The CVRA, as we refer to it, was enacted in 2001. California law disfavors at-large election systems. However, the, CBA, the CVRA strictly prohibits at-large an at-large election system or method when the results, when it results in a protected class, which is defined as a class of voters who are members of a race, color, or language minority group from being impaired from electing candidates of its choice or influencing the outcome of an election. Once the district adopts a resolution of intent pursuant to a notice received by a prospective plaintiff, such as in San Mateo Foster City uh, School District, District's case, there is what's referred to as a 90-day state of, in litigation. 
In other words, any potential plaintiffs cannot bring a lawsuit related to the CVRA during the, this 90 day stay. And it is during this 90 day stay that the district would need to complete its transition. Once a district does complete its transition and moves forward with the, a, a by trustee area election system, the district would then be in what's called the permanent safe harbor from any potential CVRA related litigation or lawsuits. Districts, the question to be asked today is how are districts drawn? Well, we have to make sure that federal laws are followed and applied. Federal laws relating to equal population, the Federal Voting Rights Act, and most importantly, no racial gerrymandering when it comes down to the drawing of the maps. We also have to take into mind and apply what, what are known as traditional principles, such as communities of interest, compact and contiguous trustee areas, visual boundaries, whether they be natural or man-made, respecting voters' past choices, and planned growth since the last uh, decennial uh, census back in 2010. The map you see here is not an official map. Please keep that in mind. This is not a map that's being used during the map drawing process. This is simply a map that is available at the, uh, in the school district's website. It is a map and school, uh, school attendance areas but it's being displayed here now so that the members of the public could see what the boundaries, uh, or at least what the San Mateo uh, Foster City School District looks like. When the map process begins and the maps begin to be drawn and ultimately presented to the community, this area here, and again, this is not to scale and it's only for informational purposes, would be divided into five areas that would be considered your trustee areas. Communities of interest, this is, is, a big, is a big point that we need to consider and it requires community input and uh, the voice of the members and the constituents of the district. The question that is asked is, what is your community, your neighborhood or your community of interest? It can be school attendance areas, natural neighborhood dividing lines, areas around parks or landmarks, common issues, activities, or concerns within a neighborhood or a community, or shared demographic characteristics, social economic status, education level, linguistic isolation. These are all factors that need to be considered when trying to determine what is your community of interest. Another question that needs to be asked is, does the community of interest want to be united in a single district or trustee area? Or does it want to be divided so that it has multiple voices in multiple elections or election cycles? The goal of tonight's public hearing is to hear from you, the residents and constituents of the district. The board would want to hear what are your board's neighborhoods? Are they the same communities of interest that you share? Are there other communities of interest to take into account? Do your communities of interest prefer to be kept together in one trustee area or have multiple representatives on the board? What other factors would you like the board to consider when drafting maps? The board will record these hearings and will ensure that all community input is considered as part of the map drawing process. Ultimately, every member of the public will be able to voice their opinion, their concern, their support, objection when the actual map drawing process begins there will be additional public hearings strictly related to the map drawing process. Maps will be presented. Members of the community have the opportunity to draft and present their own maps. So there will be plenty of opportunity for further discussion on, on this issue. But most importantly, at this point, the district would like to hear from you and get your thoughts in order to begin. President Chen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rosendo, for your presentation. Uh, so before we get to public comment, just some quick announcements. Uh, just in case you weren't aware, I know that Zoom does make you click on um, before entering into the meeting. It tells you that this, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, so this is being recorded for a record keeping pro um, 
uh, purposes. It is also meant to make sure that we can just give a copy of the recording to our demographer so that this way they can hear the public comments firsthand as well. So it is being recorded. Uh, just want to remind everybody about that. Uh, at our last meeting last week, we had uh, five people in attendance. Uh, three members spoke. Um, there were comments about making sure there were equal representation uh, between San Mateo and Foster City. Uh, there was comments about uh, the railroad tracks as sort of a natural dividing line. Um, another speaker spoke about increasing the trustees from five to seven, uh, also talked about the natural dividing lines. And then another speaker uh, asked a question about whether or not uh, in a trustee area, what happens if nobody runs? And there are procedures for that. Um, and hopefully that doesn't happen, but there are procedures um, for that uh, if that does happen in the future. Um, okay, so now that we've gone over that, I am going to officially open up the public hearing and we will go straight to public comment. Um, so Peter, if you wouldn't mind, please call in public comment. Yes, for those of the, uh, that are attending and would like to make public comment, please use the raise your hand functionality within Zoom and I'll call on you one at the time. Uh, you'll have three minutes to make your comments to the board. Okay. President Chen, we have two. First, we have Scott, and then we'll have Randy. Scott? Scott, you may need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, we can. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. Well, I know you had a hearing yesterday. I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend. That's usually, uh, I'm, I'm trusting that went, uh, went well. And, uh, and you're moving forward. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Uh, I, I hope that you would get more input tonight. Uh, there are some maps that we provided with our original letter. And uh, I, I'd hope that the community would, uh, uh, there'd be more community members because ultimately a community of interest should be whatever they say it is. But it certainly includes neighborhoods which can be defined many ways. Uh, and it often I think is helped by looking at uh, uh, demographic. Scott? I think we lost Scott. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and go to Randy and then hopefully Scott will come back and we'll have him finish out his about approximately a two minutes, 10 seconds. Um, Randy, go ahead. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. And thank you for holding this public hearing. Um, so I wanna bring up uh, when this, uh, came up as an issue this was about three years ago and at that time of the current of the current trustees who are now on the board the trustees that discussed that at the time were trustees chin watkins and corzo um, the the two newer trustees were not yet trustees and there were two other uh people that were on the board that were involved in the discussion at that time this was brought to them as um uh, as a risk right and as something to consider at that time and they decided to wait for the letter to acknowledge that that letter could come at any time and to put that off so at that time as part of the discussion the idea of um, moving to uh, seven trustees was floated and was kind of rejected out of hand <clears throat> i don't recall the specific reasons but I think that, um, especially in light of this year, where we've heard a lot of complaints from the trustees about how much work this has all been, um, it could be uh, really well reasoned that there is a need to divide the work up among more people. Additionally, um, it's really clear that there is, um, there is a big difference between the demographics between San Mateo and Foster City between the folks who live in Foster City and the folks who live in San Mateo. Furthermore, um, the, when you have five trustee areas, that doesn't break down nicely between having two trustee areas in, in 
Foster City and three in San Mateo or one in Foster City and four in San Mateo, the ratios don't work out nicely that way. However, if you have seven trustee districts, it does work out a lot better if you have seven districts to have two in Foster City and five in San Mateo. The ratio actually works out quite well that way. And I think you would be well justified in having it work out um, bro broken down that way. Um, so I would encourage, and what I would like to see when you come back with a map is not just limiting this to five districts, but proposing that you have that you come back with seven districts as an alternate plan and how that could uh, how, how that could be executed on our district. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Um, well, President Chin, we have no other hands for public comment uh, for this public hearing. However, Scott still had two minutes and I believe he either got disconnected or you know, lost connectivity, power, not 100% sure. Um, President Chen, um, I think it would be a polite thing to do. Let's give Mr. Rafferty a, a couple of minutes to see if he has some logging in issues. And uh, if we don't see him come back on in a couple, I would say about two minutes or so, then uh, we can proceed. Sure. Uh, at this time, I'll just uh, welcome anyone else who wants to raise your hand to provide any public comments. Uh, feel free so feel free to do so now um, while we wait for our original public commenter to hopefully get back into the meeting. Uh, and we're, we're, while we're on that topic, I do want to let those in attendance know that Mr. Rafferty did reference a letter, as did I, that the district received from him. And if anyone wants to view a copy of that letter, it is posted on the district's website dedicated to this process. I think he did, was able to get back in. Um, it looks Peter, like he has rejoined. Yes. Uh, Scott, we lost you. Uh, I'd like to bring you back to finish out your two minutes and approximately 10 seconds left for your public comment. Well, I'm not sure where I got dropped and I apologize for that. But uh, as I said, I hope to get more community input uh, from uh, to uh, decide this, and I, I guess that's all the time I have. Uh, but again, don't divide communities of interest. Uh, please uh, uh, try to keep them together. Look at uh, places where people gather, uh, look at common demographics, and most importantly, look at how people view their neighborhood and what they tell you it is. So thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. And I just want to point out again that uh, Mr. Rafferty did mention his letter, as did I. And for anyone in the community who would like to see a copy of his letter, it is posted on the district's website dedicated to this process. Well, President Chen, we have no other hands for public comment. All right, thank you, Peter. And thank you for the public comments. Uh, last chance, anyone else who uh, would like to make public comments? Press the wrong button. Last chance, anyone who wants to uh, provide any comments to this public hearing, please raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, we will close this public hearing and, um, and move on. Okay, so I see nobody else raising their hand. Um, so we are officially going to close this public hearing. Um, this is our second uh, meeting public hearing for this topic. Uh, the next steps, I believe, is the demographer is going to go away, take all the public comments, uh, and we will have multiple meetings as we come back, most likely in August and September, as we move forward uh, down the path of moving towards uh, trustee area elections. 
So uh, thank you everyone for providing your comments and for uh, attending this meeting and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.